it sounds like you have a fairly complete uh, NFV solution, is that right? Yes, uh, we have a full NFV solution. We have uh, NFVI, which we have developed and invest lots of efforts uh, in it. We have a service chaining, a smart service chaining, a dynamic service chaining capabilities. Wow. Uh, provide uh, the full security solution on top of this platform. This is actually our uniqueness. We, have, uh, we are providing one platform for multiple technologies. Uh, we are uh, providing uh, analytics on top of this uh, platform, and we're providing one centralized management system for security. So we have end-to-end -end solution with all the multiple technologies that, is, that are required, and we are increasing our offering uh, every day. That sounds um, very different to the way that most people have approached virtualization. Um, Ronit, you know, having a complete cybersecurity solution integrated into NFV, uh, that sounds quite powerful. I mean, what's the business case for service providers to deploy that? Well, we think technology is great, whether it's virtualization or NFV. Technology is fantastic, but the real question is today, how can you make money out of it? Mm -hmm. We see telcos have a lot of verticals they are attending to. It can be enterprises, it can be just a small ho home office. So they have different services for, or different packages for different profiles of mm -hmm. users. And we see a repeating behavior in every attack that has three stages. Mm -hmm. The first one would be penetrating the organization. Still, no harm done. Mm -hmm. The second phase is making sure you have a way out, which is establishing a backdoor. And again, at that point, the organization still no damage. Mm -hmm. The third point, which we focus on, is the behavioral change, which we see as the eighth layer. Because at this point, when an intruder is inside, you can see a different type of behavior. Mm -hmm. They approach different servers. Mm -hmm. They connect from different destinations. This should raise an alert. Yeah. How did you? How do you work out uh, uh, what constitutes abnormal behavior by somebody who's not supposed to be on the network? I mean, who have you worked with in order to develop that uh, that knowledge base? So our system at the first level will understand how your organization work, mm. and it will ask you questions. It will ask you, "This is for me abnormality. Mm. Is this usual for you?" So you will be able to tweak the system and let it understand which is severe mm. in your eyes and which you just want to know about. So, girl, I mean, you're actually selling these products now, right? Uh, how have they been received by your customers? Actually, we are seeing uh, additional demands. We have uh, installed already uh, the equipment. Customers uh, request to uh, minimize the current units they have into one or virtualized environment, so we are migrating uh, equ existing equipment into a single uh, NFV box uh, and plugged it in into our management system. Mm. So we are seeing uh, this is a gradual process with our customers mm. to provide at the end one unit, one hardware, including mm. all the VNFs on, on it, and plugged in into our management, our comprehensive management view. Mm -hmm. This is the process. One yeah. management, one box, variety of VNFs. Variety of VNFs. Yeah. yeah, it's very exciting. And uh, I really like the fact that you have uh, taken a business down approach to developing virtualization solutions rather than just focus on the technology and the acronym uh, mm -hmm. and whether it works or not, which of course I think service providers want it to work. Uh, it should work, right? Uh, by building in uh, cyber security, you've really given them the business case they need in order to move forward with virtualization. That's a very significant breakthrough for the industry, so congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.